Risk of total shutdown of ESCOM's Kuburg uh, continues to increase and delays in the return to commercial operations of Kuburg's uh, units uh, add pressure on ESCOM's fragile power supplies. The power utility has indicated that even after the nine-month uh, outage of Unit 1 at Kuburg in 2023, it still needs to conduct a series of overpressure tests on the concrete containment building that covers the nuclear reactor. Mr. Chris Yelland, an energy analyst, joins us now to give us more analysis. Chris, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Look, please take us through the importance of having uh, Kuburg at uh, full operation. Yeah, thank you. Um, look, Kuburg is very important, especially for the Western Cape. Um, without Kuburg, um, the Western Cape has to import a lot of power from the north of South Africa via transmission lines. And um, it can do so, uh, but it becomes more vulnerable. And if uh, a, one of the power lines, the transmission lines, trips out for one reason or another, and it has happened in the past, it can leave uh, the Western Cape uh, in a situation where they have to shed load. Uh, and, of course, that's uh, very undesirable. Mm. So it can, uh, it's something that uh, the, the, the more, the less generation capacity there is in the Western Cape, the more vulnerable the Western Cape is towards a regional blackout. Mm. And um, it, there have been such incidents in the past, uh, but uh, fortunately, Kuburg is not the only generation that the Western Cape have. They also have uh, the open cycle, the Eskom open cycle gas turbines in the Western Cape. So that is useful, but it's very expensive. Mm. Um, and it's not really adequate. So uh, Kuburg is an important part for system stability of the grid in the Western Cape. Mm. Look, Chris, the delays in maintenance have obviously impacted on the, the, the national energy availability. What do you make then of the ongoing breakdowns and what could be aiding to the continued uh, shutdowns, you think? Well, uh, firstly, to say that, uh, you know, from the beginning of this year, there actually has been a very steady upward increase in the energy availability factor. Mm -hmm. And the difference uh, is still not where, where we'd like it to be, far from it. It's not even 60% yet. Uh, but the, the difference between 2022 and 2023 is that during the course of the year, the gap between the 2022 energy availability factor and the 2023 has been steadily decreasing to the extent where now uh, the energy availability factor this year is about the same as it was last year at this time. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's a big plus because at the beginning of this year, the difference between uh, you know, the 22 and 2023 20, energy availability factor at the beginning of the year was very significant. So there has been the steady improvement, which I think we should all be very thankful for. Uh, we need to congratulate uh, Eskom, uh, its people on the power stations, uh, the people in management, as well as the uh, Minister of Electricity and the, the National Electricity uh, Crisis Committee, who have all been working very hard uh, on this issue. And it is step by step, slowly, over the weeks, over the months, and uh, as we head toward the end of the year, mm -hmm. uh, this gap between this year has closed. Mm. And now, Chris, look, we understand that uh, ESCOM has, uh, in the meantime, applied to the NNR for uh, a separate expiry date in the Kuburg license for the units uh, one and two, based, of course, on the rationale that unit two was commissioned about 18 months after unit one. And as we speak, apparently ESCOM is still awaiting a decision from the NNR in this regard. Talk to us about how this then impacts on the restoration as well as uh, maintenance processes. Certainly. Uh, just to summarize, um, unit number one at Kuburg, which is a 970 megawatt unit, so it's a very large generator, about one stage of load shedding, has been off uh, since um, uh, the middle of December 2022, and it's still off as we speak. Uh, uh, and it's due to come uh, online, back online, delivering commercial service uh, by the 13th of, of November. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, there have been a series of delays. It should have been on stream um, you know, by the middle of, of June this year. Uh, but as a result of a whole series of delays, including an extra 10 days only recently announced, uh, 
uh, it's running very, very late. And this is pushing uh, things into a corner. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when this unit comes back on stream on the 13th of November, the next unit, unit number two, has got to go off. And if anything is to go by, if, 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 if it follows the same pattern as unit number one, uh, it could be off for, uh, you know, 11 months. But uh, certainly Eskom say that they've learned a lot of lessons during the outage of Unit 1, mm -hmm. and they hope that the outage of Unit 2 will be much shorter. But at the end of it all, on the 21st of July, the license for the, the operating license for Kuburg expires. And Eskom has got to do a lot of work to ensure they are ready um, and, and that the NNR is satisfied that the uh, that the power station can continue operation and 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 be given a uh, additional license for the next 20 years mm. the trouble is that if something goes wrong and we are now being pushed into a corner by all of these delays yes it is conceivable the risk is growing that both units could be off simultaneously on the 21st of july mm. and chris very quickly we're out of time but i mean speaking of risk speculatively how high then is the risk of a total shutdown yeah, look, I don't want to, I'm not predicting that there will be a shutdown. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that the longer these delays occur and the more Eskom uh, get pushed into a corner, the greater the risk. Now, I, I think the risk is not insignificant at this point uh, because of the fact um, that a lot can go wrong. Eskom has even acknowledged that there's a whole series of tests that have to be done. They get done in sequence. And if they experience problems during one test, they have to stop the series of tests and sort out the problem. So that can delay things even further. Mm. But let's hope that things go correctly. I don't want to be a doomsayer or, or, a, um, uh, or, 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 or to create alarm. Uh, but the risk is growing. That is a fact. Mm. All right, Chris, thank you so much for your contribution. That was Mr. Chris Yelland, an energy analyst weighing in on a risk of a total shutdown of the Quebec plant.